microgreens are a great way at home or in a community or commercials greenhouse to actually make some really decent revenue and they don't take much to produce. So what we need for microgreens is coarse vermiculite. We've tried a whole bunch of different variety of things from burlap uh, to perlite. Uh, we've also used coconut coir, we've used some soil mixture before. The whole idea with microgreens is you want to make sure that you have something that the customer has to cut away the shoot from the seed and the root. If not, the USDA and FDA would consider that to be a sprout, and sprouts are regulated completely differently. So we prefer to have the coarse vermiculite. We buy it in large bags, and we use these trays. These are slotted trays, you can see in the bottom. This is a 10 inch by 20 inch tray, and it fits perfectly on our nursery deck. And then this one is for smaller 10 by 10 tray. So we use uh, the large trays for pea shoots, and in about two weeks we have beautiful pea shoots that we can sell to customers. We put down about two cups of the vermiculite in the bottom and spread it around. And you don't want to breathe this or have a lot of dust. That's why I use the number two course, because I want to make sure that it's a good texture. I then take one cup of pea seeds. We actually use the seeds uh, that are typically used by farmers that are doing what is called a green cover crop, where they take pea seeds, they seed it over their land so that weeds don't grow, and then by the uh, leguminous bean pulls the nitrogen out of the soil and they reconstitute or recirculate uh, and co compost that into their soil. So it's great for farmers. We use those same peas, um, and these are a sweet English pea. We buy them in 50 pound bags, and we use a cup of them to finish off our microgreen tray. So we shake these across the top, and you want to get a good, even distribution of all of those seeds. And the peas don't like to see the light as they germinate, so you can either cover them with another cup of the vermiculite, or super simple, just take another one of your trays, put it over the top for two or three days, let them germinate, and once they do, take the cover off so that they properly go through that germination process. So that's as easy as it is to germinate some really beautiful pea shoots. This is about four days after we seeded. Um, and it depends on the time of year. These can germinate in a day or two, depending on how warm the temperature is and, and the water that they get. We use the nursery deck because it allows that water to flow across the bottom, but you can see the roots are already poking out the bottom, seeking that moisture, and they're already starting to come up and get really excited uh, about growing. And in only about two weeks, this is what it looks like, ready to deliver to your customer. They can even get taller, and in fact, if your customers really like the little curly Q tendrils, in, a, in about three weeks' time, these will make perfect little tendrils. Just have to keep them wet below and keep them in a range of 68 to about 78 degrees, and you can have fantastic pea shoots year-round. It's, it's a great crop to grow, um, and we sell these for anywhere from $18 to $25, again, depending on the customer. So a great way to make a little extra profitability in uh, a small space. To seed a 10 by 10 tray, we're going to use less of the vermiculite. We're going to add this into the base and again spread it around so it does a nice job of covering those drain holes and providing a surface area for those seeds to germinate down. If you don't have some sort of surface, the problem is, is that you're going to wind up seeing all the tiny little seeds. We're going to do red rambo radish. And this is a fairly small seed, so if we don't put anything in the bottom, these seeds have a tendency to even drain right through those holes or accumulate all to one corner of, of the tray. So effectively, we're just going to sprinkle these in. And again, we want a really even distribution. So I tend to do one side and then the other so that I can get the distribution right. And I'm using two tablespoons of these larger seeds. If I were to be doing um, a much smaller seed, like a spicy Asian mix 
or kale um, or mustard greens, those seeds are so tiny that I wind up doing about three tablespoons to get a good even distribution over the whole thing. Again, we put these on our microgreen deck. They water from below. And in about three to four weeks, you have a beautiful lush uh, microgreens that you can sell to chefs. Um, and they clip them off and put them on their soups or salads. They put them in uh, a lot of their dishes and make for a really tasty dinner. So those radish that we uh, seeded just the other day have germinated and you can see they're just teeny tiny getting started out there. But in two weeks, they're gonna look like this, a beautiful deep red color, a beautiful radishy flavor and something that the chefs will buy up for about $10 for a flat. So if you look at the uh, margin on this, this is a really great product that you can grow in, at home or in your uh, farm and actually do pretty well with as far as the, the profit margin. So the perlite or vermiculite that we put in here is 20, 30 cents worth. The seed, depending on seed type, can be anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar, unless you're doing shiso, and then it's like $7. And the flat itself is about 50 cents. And if you can sell that for $10, you got about a buck and a half in it. That's a pretty good margin overall. The reason most people don't make this their whole entire business is a chef may want one of these flats, but then they're asking for like six cases of lettuce at the same time, and they'll use this all week, where they'll go through the lettuce really fast. Chefs use these for putting on soups, on salads, in sandwiches, anything to decorate the plate and really make it look attractive. So it's a good way that you can make a little extra income with your aquaponics setup.